So I want to welcome each and every one of us once again uh, to School of Transformational Leadership. Uh, we'll be taking uh, the personal leadership journey once again. Uh, we'll be starting with Modu Tool, which is effective and efficient leadership. Uh, we'll be looking at four different topics under this module. Uh, we'll be looking at creative leadership. We'll be looking at innovative leadership. We'll be looking at strategic leadership. We're going to be looking at adaptive leadership. But today, we are only going to focus on just two of those uh, leadership uh, style or leadership uh, 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 skill. We are going to dwell on creative leadership and then in the next uh, lesson, we'll be looking at innovative uh, leadership. Now, let's get started. Creative leadership. Creative leadership is the art of finding new paths and opening up of new frontiers for others to follow. Now, when we talk about uh, creative leadership, when we talk about creative leadership, what we are saying is you working in a path that nobody has ever trod before. It is you creating a new frontier, opening up a new space, a space that nobody has ever done any kind of activity. That is what creative leadership is. And I can tell you that that is what we need more than anything else in African society today. We need people who will create something out of nothing. Something who will look at, people who will look at uh, things that other people will ignore and then be able to come up with something that will bring explosive growth and revolution to the society. And it is my own belief that we don't have to start thinking of a society where you would, uh, uh, we, I mean, we have to start thinking of a society where you will no longer worry about whom you know to rise to the top, but by the strength of your intellectual uh, capacity. That is the kind of society I am looking forward towards. A society whereby you will not need to rely upon your uncles, your aunties, your, uh, your brothers, your fathers, your mothers, because they are placed in high positions and you want to use their influence uh, to gain access to those positions. Uh, we, we want to rapidly move away from that era and allow your gifts, your talent, your leadership ability to pave the way for you. That is the kind of society that I'm looking forward to uh, in Africa. And we are already beginning that uh, with School of Transformational Leadership. Now, what is creative? What is creativity? Creativity is not something that you can conjure like a magic. When we talk about creativity, people think you have to conjure some magic. Uh, some people think it's even mystical. Creativity is not something magical or something mystical. Creativity is something that is very simple. Every day of your life, there is always an opportunity to express and explore creativity. Creativity happens in a moment. It is within 
a particular moment whereby you are able to pay you know some consistent attention you are able to focus on that moment to create something out of the ordinary situation and bring something extraordinary that is what creativity is and that is why the with Jones says creativity is not something magical or mystical it is something very simple it is a moment the moment we look at the ordinary and see the extraordinary so as an aspiring transformational leader we must be able to see the need to see creative possibility in the ordinary things of life for progress to continue to occur in our society on a daily basis. So we have to pay attention to the mundane things of life, things people, ordinary people will ignore. You have to pay a little extra attention to them. It is in the payment of that little extra attention that is where creativity is born. Even as I am speaking right now, if only you can pay just a little more attention to what is being said, to what is uh, looking, staring you in the face, to what is in your uh, environment. There is always an opportunity to explore and express your creative ingenuity. If only you will pay a little more attention. Now, so how do we wrap our hands around this concept called creativity? Now, I want to bring this creativity alive uh, by telling you the story. Perhaps some of you must have heard about him, Galileo Galilei. Uh, uh, he was born in 1564 and died in 1642. I want to tell you the amazing story of this great inventor of pendulum clock. He also invented so many things. He invented the the he, he invented thermometer, he invented microscope, he invented telescope. There are so many inventions that this great man invented just because he paid a little more attention to what is going on within his environment. Now the amazing story of Galileo is one story that has been a great inspiration to me over the years. We may not think much of the pendulum clock as a breakthrough invention today as it was in the 16th century when determining time of the day was only a guesswork done by those with sophisticated knowledge of the sun's movement. Galileo in 1583, just at the tender age of 19, was attending a prayer meeting at the magnificent cathedral in Rome. That was his usual activity. Every day uh, he loves to go to the cathedral to observe his money prayer. And it was, it was one of these days, one of those days that he went into the cathedral to observe his money ritual. But however, on this particular day, he got distracted by swing altar lamp as it swings back and forth. And by using his pulse as a metronome to time the swinging of the altar lamp, he noticed that no matter how far or how short 
the lamp swings, it takes an equal amount of time for the lamp to swing back and forth. And of course, the big idea that sprung forth was Galileo's invention of the pendulum clock. My hope is that you will acknowledge the greatness of Galileo's invention because it is possible you may not see what is so spectacular about a pendulum clock. But I like you to begin to imagine how would our world look like if there is no invention of time. The modernity we are so proud of today will be a far cry. The invention of time was very critical to many basic things of life. Some people may argue that maybe Galileo didn't actually invent time, that probably the Egyptians and the Babylonians uh, over 5,000 years ago were the actual inventor of time. But they were only able to do it by observing the movement of the sun. And it was not with much accuracy. But with the pendulum clock, Galileo was able to get the exactness and the, and the exact precise uh, reading of the time. Look at how human all over the world are being uh, remunerated today. Some people are paid hourly, some people are paid weekly, some people are paid monthly. Without the invention of time, this wouldn't have been possible. And that is why I said creativity is not something that is spectacular. All you just need to do is to pay attention to what is already available around you. You don't need to look too far to exhibit the great gifts of creativity. So this now moves me to the question, how do we get creative? Or if you want to personalize it, you may ask yourself, how do I get creative? Now to tell you how to get creative, let me also uh, debunk the myth of inspiration. I like to tell you that you don't need to uh, you don't need to become a genius before you can become uh, a creative leader. It is genius is just one percent uh, of the whole uh, exercise. So it is not. Uh, I have to. I have to get. Um, uh, I, I, I. I. It is not that I, I have to be a genius before I can be creative. No, you don't need. You don't need to be a genius to become creative. And you need to know that geniuses, in the real sense of it, are not unusual people with unusual brainwaves. Geniuses are ordinary people like you and me who have committed themselves to doing the hard work that talented people would not do. You see, it is, it is very unfortunate that some people, when they possess a talent, they want to trade their talent for hard work. You see, if you really want to be a well-celebrated creative leader, you cannot afford to play down the role of hard work. Or, if I want to put it in the word of Thomas Anderson, you cannot play down the role of perspiration for you to get creative. I have seen a lot of people 
whom when we were in primary school, secondary school, they were very brilliant, very talented. At that level, you could call them genius. But because they were very talented, very, uh, very, uh, very brilliant, they, they stopped doing the hard work. They stopped perspiring to continue to develop the talent that was in the first place a gift that they did not work for. The temptation for many of us is to take our talent for granted. We always believe our talent will always bail us out. So because we believe that the talent is there, the gift is, is there, we don't want to do the extra work of perspiring in order to get the best out of our talent. Now, so how do you get creative? Now, Galileo taught us that through conscientious observation of our mundane life, we can invent great things. How did, did Galileo invent the pendulum clock? Galileo was able to invent the pendulum clock by just observing the altar swing, the lamp of the altar swing, uh, the altar that was swinging back and forth. And by virtue of that, he was able to say, if this thing is constant and regular and will not stop, then it should be able to predict the accuracy of time. That was how Pendulum Clock was born. I, I am fortunate when I was younger, my grandfather, you know, and in those days, if you, if you, if you were born in the eighties, you know, in the seventies, you see many of our grandfathers and grandmothers, they don't have all this sophisticated uh, clock in their house. They, they only possess pendulum clock. And that was because Galileo invented time at that time. So how do you get, get creative? You get creative by creating a daily habit for creative thinking. You have to, you have to create that habit. You have to put yourself in the mood of always being creative on a daily basis. To get creative, I like to quote what Thomas Edison said. He said, creative people work harder on task. Talented people often brush aside as unnecessary. And he was able to say, genius is only 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. Creative people will tell you it doesn't matter. I don't have to work very hard. I mean, I mean, talented people will tell you it doesn't matter. I don't have to work very hard. But creative people will, even though they, they are talented, they will still like to put in extra effort because it is that extra effort that makes an ordinary man to become extraordinary. So to get creative, you need to think differently. You need to act differently. Creativity is a matter of perspective. The lenses we choose when we view a problem is very critical. Our perspective is what holds the key to whether the solution is ordinary or extraordinary. If we can't learn to change lenses, we will be trapped. That was in the word of David Jones. So David Jones also said, if we let our pattern go too long unquestioned, they become our prison. When we break pattern, 
everything is always in question. If we break our pattern, everything is always in question. So my best advice for you is to knock off the word impossibility from your vocabulary. Uh, I did that many years ago, over 20 years ago. I decided to knock off the word impossibility out of my dictionary. So I am giving you that uh, advice today. If you really want to do yourself the word of good, uh, you need to knock off the word impossibility out of your dictionary. Now let's talk about the add-on values of creativity. Now to be creative, you have to improve your skill sets. That is very, very critical. You have to improve your skill set and you have to position yourself in the place you are likely to succeed. Don't place, don't position yourself in a place where you are likely to fail. Know what your strengths are and focus your creative attention in the area of your potential, in the area of your strength. Don't try to work on your weakness. The point is you are already weak in that area. Rather than working on your weakness, work on your strength. Because your strength is what you can make to be better. Your weakness, you, can, you cannot significantly improve on your weakness. But you can always do better when you continue to improve your strength. And here are my creative creativity tips for you. If you want to be creative, here are my creativity tips for you. Number one, you need to have the right vision. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Where there is no vision, people cannot express themselves. So you need to have the right vision to be creative. Number two, you need to be passionate about the work you are doing. You see, nobody will be more passionate in your assignment more than you. In fact, when people can perceive your passion, then they will be ready to be passionate with you. But if you are not demonstrating enough passion in your calling, in your vocation, in your assignment, people are not going to be more passionate than you. You are the one to exhibit that passion. And the beautiful thing about passion is that passion is transmittable. People can easily catch your passion. People can easily connect with a man or a woman of passion. So you need to be passionate about the work you are doing. Number three, creativity tips for you. You need to continually improve your skills. Don't say you have arrived. Never believed your best is here or the best version of you is already here never believe that lie always continue continually continuously improve on your skills number four you have to position yourself in the field you know you have competence and capacity. Don't go and major in what you are not good at. Some people they love to major in the in the area, in the field, in the discipline. They are not very good at. If you want to major at all, make make sure you major in your area of strength, in the area of your competence and capacity. And about Einstein says, you cannot judge how smart a fish is 
by its ability to climb a tree. If you put a fish on a tree and say, okay, begin to climb, and you want to know whether the fish is smart or not, you are using the wrong parameter to measure the smartness of the fish. If you really want to see the ingenuity of a fish, all you just need to do is to put the fish in its natural domain, and that is water, and you will see the ingenuity. <laughs> You will see the ingenuity of a fish. So number five, you have to be patient. You have to be what? To be patient. Creativity is not about vision and passion only. Some people think once they have vision, once they have passion, they are good to go. No, that is not what creativity, that is not all that defines creativity. Creativity is not about vision and passion only. It is also about skill, perseverance, and resilience as well. You have to keep on holding on. You have to continue to perspire until you get the result that you are looking for. And I think number six, if I'm not mistaken, number six, uh, be ready to seize your moment or moments because every, every moment is an opportunity for creativity. In fact, as I am speaking right now, if only you can discern the moment that we are in, there is an opportunity to be creative. And in case you miss this opportunity, the next moment you are going to encounter is also going to be a great opportunity for you to be creative. So be ready to seize your moment when it presents itself. And remember what David Jones told us. He said, creativity is not magical, it's not mystical, it is a moment. The moment when you look at the ordinary things and you are able to bring out extraordinary things. The moment where you are able to look at the mundane things, the everyday things of life, and you are able to bring something that is revolutionary out of it. Now, so how do we develop a creative mind? How do we develop? What is the process for developing a creative mind? Now, I'd like you to know that creativity is a combination of curiosity and learning. Let me come again. Creativity is a combination of curiosity and learning. Creativity is not just being curious. It is good to be curious. It is good to be inquisitive. It is good to want to explore things. But much more than being curious, you also have to embrace the discipline of learning. You have to embrace the discipline of learning. Curiosity and learning is what I call the real value of education. That is what I call the real value of education. So I want to encourage you, don't let your master be your grades. You know, some people, they have exalted their grades above what they can bring to the table or above the lessons they can learn from life experience. Don't let uh, uh, the grades you are getting in school or anywhere else be the focus of your life. If you allow grade to be your master, you will be slave to your grades. You will never be able to think creatively. You will never be able to take risk. You will never be able to explore things on your own. Much of what happens when we become matured, you know, it's good for you sometimes to just observe the little kids 
and the adult. When you look at the little, little kids, what do you see about them? You see curiosity. You see inquisitiveness. That is why when you are left with, with, a, with, a, with a young boy or a young girl, within the space of two minutes, they can ask you 30 questions. Why? Because they are, they are very curious. Why? Because they are very inquisitive. They want to know. They want to gain knowledge. And my advice for you is that if you truly want to be creative, never lose that attitude of being a child who is always curious about life, who is always curious about things. When we become mature, then we quit being playful. We quit being creative. We lose the desire to explore and to use our imagination and to be ourselves. The solution is to be more like a child. Now, I'm going to tell you some of the known facts about creativity. You will agree with some of them and perhaps you will begin to observe some of them beginning from this moment. Some known facts about creativity. Number one, creativity is a skill that can be developed. You can develop it. So it is not out of reach for you. Number two, creativity starts with the way you think. You need to pay attention to what you think. You need to pay attention to how you think. So that is where creativity starts from. It begins with the way you think. Number three, creativity is something you are born with. You are born to think creatively. So it's already inherent inside of you. All you just need to do is to let it out. Number four, creativity is not about developing a new skill. Unfortunately, that is what many people believe. They believe creativity is about developing a new skill. But that is not what creativity is. Creativity is about fi finding the one that has been there all along and nurturing it back to life. That is what creativity is. Because already within you, there is that creative ability within you. All you just need to do is to nurture it back to life. Number five, creativity can be displayed in any field. Whether you are a songwriter, whether you are a newscaster, whether you are a journalist, whether you are an artist, whether you are a banker, whether you are an accountant, whether you are a, a, a lawyer, whether you are a dentist, whether you are an engineer, whether whoever you are, whether you are a politician, creativity is not limited to one particular field. It can be displayed in any field. So you are not at a disadvantage if you are called into a specific assignment that a lot of people are not called into. Don't, don't think you are disadvantaged. Number six, there is no limit to how much of creative ideas that you can display. Your creative ability is boundless, is limitless. There is no boundary. So begin to explore. Number seven, Creativity is coming up with something new that has value. If there is no value in what you are coming up with, then it is not yet creativity. It has to deliver value to people. That is what makes it creativity. Number eight, creativity makes it more fun to learn. When you discover you are creative in your assignment, it gives you the pleasure to want to learn more. 
it gives you the pleasure to want to continue to improve yourself. And number nine, creativity makes your idea to stick. In other words, it gives you credibility to it. When you nurture an idea and you stand by that idea, what creativity does is to establish your, 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 your credibility in that idea that you are nurturing. And number 10, creativity makes you more interesting. And that is what Michael Gelson said. Creativity makes you more interesting. So you can see that creativity is all about you. You have to believe in yourself. You have to believe you can do it. You have to believe it is within your reach. You have to believe that it is possible. Now let's talk about the components of creative thinking. The components of creative thinking. What are the what are the things that makes creative leadership what it is? What are the components? What are the things that came together to make creative idea what looking for? Number one component of creative thinking is what I call divergent thinking. Divergent thinking. And what is divergent thinking? Divergent thinking is the process of coming up with possibilities. It is like the word diversity. In other words, there are so many different varieties, so many options available, so many alternatives that you could explore. That is what divergent thinking is all about. Is divergent thinking doesn't just focus on one very good idea. No, that is not what creativity is. Creativity is not about one very good idea. No, it is, it is exploring different levels of ideas. It's also from the word divide, which, which means separate into different parts. And summarily, divergent thinking is the ability to come up with multiple ideas. That is what divergent thinking is. To come up with plenty ideas, with a lot of ideas, multiple ideas that you can you can make choice from. And this is what Albert Einstein says. He said, if at first the idea is not absorbed, then there is no hope for it. No, don't, don't feel that your ideas looks or sounds cookie or, uh, or your idea sounds very funny or your idea sounds like it's not going to be possible. No, don't, don't be embarrassed with the different ideas that are coming to your mind. And that is why about Einstein says, if your idea is not absorbed, then there is no hope for it. It has to look funny to people. People may even laugh at you that your idea is crazy. People have to make fun of you that you are out of your mind. But that is how to get creative. Now, the second component of creative thinking is convergent thinking. You know, you are now beginning to converge that idea out of that maybe hundreds or thousands of ideas that you have in your mind. Now, those ideas are now beginning to come together to become a very good idea. So convergent thinking is evaluating 
and refining your ideas so they are actually worth something. They are now beginning to converge into something unique, something different, something that becomes valuable. That is what convergent thinking is. I'm sure you must have heard people say that failure is not an option in life. But I'd like you to know that in real life setting, failure is evidently one of the options at first. It is an essential part of the creative process. So in other words, what am I saying? Don't be afraid to fail. When you fail, evaluate what has happened. Learn your lesson. Let the lessons you have learned empower you and move on with your life. Failure is never final. Failure is never fatal. It is, it is a learning process. When you fail, make sure you are failing forward. Don't let your failure undermine what can still be possible about about you now let's talk about the techniques for generating good ideas techniques for generating good ideas to generate good ideas you need to engage in the act of brainstorming you have to brainstorm i'm sure you heard about that word before and perhaps at one time or the other you have done it you have engaged in the art of brainstorming before and I'm going to tell you three quick rules you need to observe when you are brainstorming. Number one, brainstorm by yourself. And then combine ideas with a group. Brainstorm alone, then get a group of people together, also brainstorm with them. The number two thing, or number two rules about brainstorming, is that you need to know you need to you need to know in case you don't know now you need to know now in case you don't know before that there are no bad ideas when brainstorming don't say this one is not good and you throw it away no you have to accommodate every idea there are no bad ideas when you are brainstorming and also you also need to know that there are also no good ideas when you are brainstorming. Every idea is valid. Every idea is important. Because it is in the midst of those ideas that you think they are not good or you think they are good, that is when, as you begin to focus on that creative attention, that is when they begin to converge into something that is unique. I'm still talking about techniques for creating, for generating good ideas. I said, number one, you need to engage in the act of brainstorming. Number two, you need to seize the right time and moment. Seize, I cannot emphasize more on this. You need to seize the right time. There is a saying that says, make a while the sun shines. You need to learn how to seize the moment, seize the right time. Number two, change your environment when you reach a dead end. That is how to generate good ideas. When you have, uh, you are trying to get something done and you believe you have really reached a dead end, sometimes what you need to do in such a situation is just to change your environment. Number three, number four. Sometimes when you are engaging in brainstorming or you are, are trying to generate a good ideas, sometimes what you you will just you might just need to do is just to change your viewpoint or the lenses through which you are looking at problems. 
You just need to change your perspective a little bit. Look at it from another angle. See it from another vantage. And you will see that it will make all the difference. Number five, you need to let your imagination run full length without any self-imposed boundary. That is another technique for generating good ideas. Let your imagination run full length without any self-imposed boundary. And Albert Einstein says, imagination is more important than knowledge. Imagination is more important than knowledge. Well, we are gradually coming to the end of, uh, of this course. And now we want to look at what exactly is the goal of a creative thinking leader? What are you trying to achieve? What is your goal? What is your aim? What are you driving towards? What is your ultimate goal as a creative thinking leader? Now, the ultimate goal of a creative thinking leader is to create an ideal world that is possible. That is always what a creative leader is always aspiring to, to do or to become. A creative leader is always interested in creating an ideal world that is possible. But sometimes we know that an ideal world uh, sometimes can, can be very, very elusive. It, it can be something you continue to pursue even all the days of your life and you will not really reach, reach, reach the ideal world that you are looking for. But the most important thing is even though uh, it may lose, look elusive, but you are not giving up on it. You believe it can be possible. And that it is that impetus of possibility that drives you, that keeps you getting more creative day by day. Another goal of a creative thinking leader is that you have to desire to be the next big deal in our shared expectation of a world that is possible. You have to believe in yourself. You see, if you don't believe in yourself, nobody's going to believe in you. You have to believe that you are different. You have to believe that you are called for such a time as this. You have to believe that you are uniquely designed by God to make something happen. So you have to desire that you are going to be the next big deal in our shared expectation of a world that is possible. And as I conclude, I want to leave you with these anonymous quotes. It says, Leadership is not putting greatness into people, but recognizing that the greatness is already in them. Now, what I am doing, uh, what I am doing through this teaching is not to put greatness in you, but I'm only calling your attention that that greatness is already within you. And you need to let it out. You need to release it to the world and be the person that you have been called to be. Thank you. Do we have any question? Yes, sir. We have questions, sir. Yeah, let's go ahead and ask our questions. Okay, you you made um, a, a valid point. Like when we are trying to be creative, when we reach a dead end, yeah. we should probably change our viewpoint. Yeah. That's one. And then so secondly, our environment. Our environment. Yeah. If we are uh, in, for, for example, now we are in a place that 
we have no means of changing our environment, what is the next thing for us to do? For for example, uh, uh, when when you say environment, you mean we changing our location from where we are probably even where we stay to brainstorm and and do stuff. So what was the next thing? What's next for us to do? All right, let me say that um, uh, the call to change our environment does not necessarily mean uh, you have to japa like uh, we like uh, it has been coined in our Nigerian context. Uh, changing your environment does not necessarily mean you want to run away from the country. It could be one of the thing to do, but that is not what uh, we are trying to emphasize there. Changing your environment could just be as little as changing the circle of your friends or changing uh, some of the uh, so, so changing the way you you schedule your activities. It could also mean changing uh, some of the TV programs you are watching. It could mean changing the kind of books you are reading. You know, anything that gives, that feeds your mind, anything that is able to gain access to your mind. If you change such thing, that is precisely what we meant by changing your environment. It could mean changing from Lagos to Ibadan. It doesn't have to be from Nigeria to America. It could be changing from Lagos to Ibadan because Ibadan is more quiet, not too quiet anyway, but compared to Lagos. Or it could even mean changing from Lagos to a very remote place in Ekiti or in Osho. So, so the changing of environment is relative depending on how you interpret it. And the same also goes with changing your viewpoint. All you just need to do is to break the pattern. Change the approach. Do it the other, another way. And of course, you get a different result. So, sorry, uh, to buttress the question now, we are changing our approach, changing our viewpoint. There's this popular norm, thinking outside the box. Yeah. Thinking outside the box. How do we, how do we uh, link that together to changing our viewpoint? Because so sometimes we, uh, they say what is facing someone is backing another person. Yeah. So how do we, uh, you know, we, you, we're trying to be a creative leader. How do we uh, remain creative by thinking outside the box? Yeah, you see, creativity, you know, well, I, I happen to, to study business administration as my first degree. And I remember in one of our class, and I've also read it in many management books, uh, they will they will draw a circle. I mean, they will draw. They will point put a dot about three at the top, three on the side, three under, three on the on the other side, and they will say that you need to join all the circles together without breaking pattern, without crossing one uh, uh, one of the dots two times. And you will discover that the only way to be able to successfully do that is that you have to break the barrier. Without breaking the boundary, there is no way you can connect the dots. And that is what creativity is. And that is one of the things I said. I said you need to let your imagination run full length without any self-imposed boundary. You see, your only limitation is the boundary you are imposing on yourself. Is the limitation you are giving to yourself. So thinking outside the box means you have to break the boundary 
to be able to get the result you are looking for. Is that is that okay? Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah. Uh, let me just quickly take this call. I will. I will. I will join you guys.